everybody. I'm just going to do a quick video here on these Lionel milk cars and an update. So uh, you may be familiar with these cars. They were the latest release from Lionel, um, cataloged all the way back to like 2016, I think it was. And Lionel put these cars out in late 2020 or early 2021. Um, and they had some issues. So the paint job and everything was beautiful, um, but there was some issues with paint chipping and you can see mine right there. But the biggest issue is that the cars are really not operable with these new trucks and couplers that Lionel put on here. So these are the results of uh, new tooling. So Lionel went and um, had to get new tooling for these because the old tooling was lost, et cetera, et cetera, um, and trying to make them in a different factory. So these, from what I can see, these were made in Vietnam, which I think is fairly new for Lionel. Um, but there's some differences. So the trucks are not sprung, they are fixed, and the couplers don't pivot with the truck. It is all one fixed piece. Now, these couplers are not operable, in my opinion. Um, I can't run them on my layout. I It was very frustrating trying to run these cars, um, which led to a lot of frustration in general because I have like 20 of them with this same issue. All the latest release from Lionel. So they did a small batch of production of reruns for Metka, which I did a video on, and that is this new style coupler, which has this little tab on it here, you can kind of see. And for whatever reason, that seems to make a big difference. Um, the trucks are still not sprung. Um, you know, the couplers still don't pivot, you know, independently of the truck, but for whatever reason, this seems to make a pretty big difference. Um, definitely not perfect. I still had some derailments here and there, but 98% better, I would say. So you can get these replacement trucks from Lionel Customer Service. So if you've been eyeing up any of these milk cars, you know, I know a lot of the dealers have been blowing them out or did blow them out. And um, I picked up actually a couple extras in like Rutland and central Vermont, pretty cheap just to have, and maybe I'll renumber one day. Um, but you can get couplers to actually make these cars operable. Now, Lionel sent me like 40 of these, so that's what I've been doing the past couple days is swapping these out. And it is certainly not as easy as just swapping out the whole truck. You know, in a, in a perfect world, I think that's what they probably would have done is given everybody new trucks with the old style, you know, sprung trucks with independently moving couplers. But that's not what they did. Um, so not, not a perfect solution, but it is a solution to get these cars operable. Um, so definitely better than having shelf queens. And I'm glad that Lionel was able to offer some sort of solution. So I'm going to show you how to replace these just in the event you want to buy these cars, maybe have some of these cars and aren't aware of the solution. Uh, but just what I did to get these cars operable. So how we replace these couplers, you actually have to take the whole truck off and then take the wheel out to get to the screws to remove the coupler. So it's been a little bit of a project here as I work through, you know, doing this 40 times. This is the last one, but I'll show you what you have to do. All right, so trucks are off. We'll put that out of the way for now. Um, one of the things that I've noticed here, we'll see if we can zoom in and show you, is that the couplers themselves um, actually look like I don't know if it's zinc pest but the paint has has come off this piece of the coupler in some cases the hinge here as well and the whole inside piece here so this one's not too bad but every single one looks like this so I don't know if it's zinc pest I don't know if it's a bad paint job um, but even if you know you find that the cars are operable for you as is you may want to consider replacing these anyway um, every single coupler I'll show you some others here as well. Every single coupler looks like this. Um, so I don't know if it's gonna fall apart in a couple years or what. It definitely, you know, it has a little bit softer feel to it, but just something to be aware of. All right, so we have to take the truck apart, which means um, removing the wheel and the side frame to get to the coupler where these screws are. You can see them tucked in back here. So what I've been doing is I will just loosen it a little bit. And then kind of bend 
the side frame out. Shouldn't say bend, but pop it out. The wheel pops out there a little bit. That way, it, if you take the whole side frame off, it can be a little difficult to try to get it back on with the wheels and everything in place. Um, so a little trick that I found. And then you've got easy access to these two screws. So we will remove those. And then that just pops right off. This, you want to make sure you still you keep your spring on here because that's what makes the new coupler work. We'll get one of our new couplers. Here we go. So it comes with a new coupler and new screws. Um, I haven't been replacing the screws. I did have a couple. I think I had one or two that looked like the paint was starting to chip on the screw. Um, and so I did replace that. But otherwise, I'm not going to replace them. All right, so you want to get it back on there. But the most important thing, and it took me a little practice to learn this, is this, you can see the spring is down here. If that's the case, the coupler will not, this, this mechanism does not work. So you need to make sure the spring comes out and then is all the way forward. There we go. Now just a little test. So there's a little lip here that holds the spring forward. You wanna make sure the whole spring is in front of that. Screw these back in. go perfect put our wheel back tighten up our side frame one more test so we'll get both these back on here we'll run the cars around the layout and you can see what i mean uh, with them being a little bit better. I did have one one derailment I'll show you a picture of here where I tried to back a bunch of the cars coupled together uh, around a switch and down a curved grade. Um, that was really the only case where I've seen these cars derail with these couplers. Otherwise, all the other spots that I had problems with uh, don't have the same problems. Now, they still ride a little rougher because they don't have uh, sprung trucks and the cars don't want to couple together on curves, but they will couple together on straight areas So I'll show you what I mean here couple. So this is an 072 curve Okay, this is not an 036 or 027 curve. I'm trying to couple these together on so it'll take a couple tries And there you go um, but on a straight piece of track, they go together fine. So if you come across these cars at a reasonable price, you know, I know some of the dealers were blowing them out. They are worth considering, especially with the replacement couplers from Lionel. Um, it actually makes them operable. Um, the, the other thing you could do that I know some guys have done is you can convert these to KDs. I believe they come with the mounting pads. I could be wrong, but I think they come with mounting pads. Now you'd have to buy the KD separately, so that's an added cost. Um, I don't run KDs on my layout. You know, I have thought about doing that one day and converting stuff over, but for now I just run regular couplers partially because um, KDs would probably have issues on my inside loop. So one day maybe we'll do that, but for now this seems to at least get them operable and uh, enough that I can run them. So I'll show you what I mean here. We'll run them around the layout and uh, break them in because I've never actually broken in some of these cars with uh, with some regular milk cars, some reefers, and a whole bunch of mixed freight and put them to the test.